Craig here with my brother Jordan and my sister Melissa. Hi. And my brother's four years younger than me and my sister is six years younger than me. How old are you? How old am I? Yeah. I just turned 30 this year. How did you not know this? It's a You're milestone. Like, like everyone's like, it's a milestone. And everyone's like, yeah, fuck it. It's just Craig. Who cares? <laughs> he acts like he's perpetually 15 anyway. So we're not... We're not normally under the same roof anymore. I mean, the last time was like, you know, last week, but I'm <laughs> not counting that. I don't think I was there. You were there. Was it? Oh. We talked about this. We <laughs> <laughs> but we're not normally under the same roof because Melissa ran away to Tennessee. I didn't run away. But uh, this is this is actually this is actually kind of cool. What was the, do you guys remember the last time we were together? Like Probably some stupid holiday. Christmas. Christmas. About that. Was it, were you over last Christmas? I work like every holiday, so I might have stopped by, but... Yeah, I think you stopped by, then you had to go to work. The great thing about being unemployed now is I get holidays off. So we got the Nintendo 64, the Christmas of 1996, the Christmas it came out. And Surprisingly. Surprisingly. Well, yeah, no, that's true. But, um, you know, you know, your mom and dad did do okay things once in a while. It wasn't very often. And uh, you guys remember the game we got with it, right? Killer Instinct. We got, we got, we got, we got Killer Instinct. And um, I think that was the last Christmas you believed in Santa Claus. I think... I want to say, well, I want to say you were like seven, so like, you can cut her some slack, she was like seven, and um, so like mom and dad, like a month later, told us like, oh, Santa Claus must have dropped Mario behind the TV, so they, they got Mario, because they couldn't find Mario for that Christmas, I mean, Nintendo well, 64, Mario. Well, well, yeah, I mean, the whole, like, the Nintendo 64 was like really hard to find that Christmas in the first place. I'm surprised they got it. And apparently nobody wanted Killer Instinct. <laughs> So, <laughs> so um, they're like, oh man, Santa Claus was drop Mario behind the TV. So they're like, like a month later, it's like, like give us like Mario to like unwrap. So I got Perfect Dark, the Christmas it came out, and it completely overtook Goldeneye for us. Oh yeah, oh definitely. That's I, you know, one of the best parts about Perfect Dark over Goldeneye was was bots. So yeah. with Perfect Dark, we could we could we could play against yeah. each other. But like Melissa sucks, so we didn't we didn't do that that often. Listen, I'm not gonna hold against you. You were like nine. It's fine, whatever. <laughs> you weren't very good. So then we could like team up and go against bots. This is gonna be a crash Melissa video. <laughs> Cause she was nine. It's okay. Whenever we're together, is it anything less than than crash Melissa? I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I I love the music and I love the different personalities for the bots. I love that you can customize like the whip and load out. Like, you know, a lot of people are still stuck with Goldeneye, but for me, like Perfect Dark, which is everything Goldeneye was and better. You got a little more flexibility in Perfect Dark. Mm -hmm. Like all rockets. You also have like no frame rate, you go down to like five frames a second, but I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember if it was this game or 007, but sometimes when you would get into your little clubhouse in the facility or whatever it was. It was complex, wasn't it? Complex. Because yeah, we would always play complex. And you would have this little clubhouse, and the only way me and Robbie could win is if I laced Robbie with remote mines instead it's of <laughs> running in. I remember Barman. You, you remember Bomberman? Oh my god, you destroyed me all the time. Bomberman 64, great game. I You know, Bomberman 64 is like, it's not like any other Bomberman. Because the explosions okay, yeah, are in 3D, like, yeah, right. this is the first one we ever played, it's the first Bomberman we, we, any of us ever played. But, um, when you go to play other Bombermans, like, the explosions are in a cross shape. Yeah, yep. so and they're easier to avoid. They're easier to avoid. Here, they're, they're all around. Well, there wasn't the blocky, kind of... Right, the, the environments were a little more... Uh, Adventurous. Uh, yeah, exactly, that's, that's a good way to put it. And one of my favorite things about Bomberman 64 were like the different effects you could pick up, like the different skulls you could pick up, yeah, and change the arena. Like you would pick up like a skull oh, and then right. turn into a giant, giant Bomberman, like big fatty we used to call him. And then you line bombs everywhere. And then you just line because he couldn't walk anywhere, so he'd be this giant, big fatty Bomberman, couldn't yeah. move, and then you're dead. That's it. And then you could be that really small one, f fly through everything. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, even that was kind of dangerous because yeah. then you'd be just zipping into an explosion. Crap. But, but my favorite effect was the disco lights. They didn't really do anything. It was just cool to watch. It was just really cool to watch with those disco lights. Beetle Adventure Racing. Or and I just picked up that game. Stupid memory card though. I don't fucking have one of those. You don't, you, oh, you need... Yeah, you need yeah, a memory card. Yeah, it says controller pack. So we'll needed. just have to restart every single time. But we love playing. This, this game is awesome. I don't... Did we ever actually own this game? Because I, I remember... I bought it. You bought it? Yeah. Because yeah. I remember, because we rented it quite a bit from that... Uh, from Store that, at the bottom of the hill. It was, it was like it was like attached like a pizza place, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't remember what it was called. Nah, me neither. But I remember, I remember playing it. You guys played it more than I did. Like, you would play... Because you guys are closer in age 
together you two than I am to either one of you. Yeah. And I remember that you guys used to play this, but you wouldn't race. No, we just, just dick around. You just drive around like I'm going to the store. Yeah. And, then to... <laughs> and then you'd have like little houses or something in the game. And then Be back park. later. <laughs> I'm going to work. Pizza. Honey. <laughs> you guys did not play the game, but that's awesome. That's that. I mean, I think that's kind of cool that the game allowed you to like have exercise. Your, yeah, exercise your imagination. You don't have to do what the game's telling you to do. I kind of like that a lot. Do you guys remember how many multiplayer modes were in Donkey Kong 64? There was like three. There was three? Because yeah. I remember just the one. I remember where, like you could you beat the crap out of each other. On Shot that, each other. On yeah, the I arena. thought there was a racing one too, wasn't no. it? No. I don't remember what they were. We'll have to play it later. Check. I, you will have to figure this. <laughs> I did. I don't like the multiplayer in it. It was very forced, it seemed. Kind of like it was trying to be 007 with monkeys. Was it first person? Would you like run around? Yeah, I think you could if you wanted to. I think you could change the view. I, I Are think we Norm thinking about Banjo? Because didn't Banjo could Banjo Tui have that? Banjo Tui had a sucky. But I like the I like the regular better than the multiplayer. The multiplayer kind of sucked in my opinion. In Donkey Kong 64? Oh, definitely, yeah. But I, well, I like that one. I mean, I don't know how many modes there were. The only one I remember is the Can't one where you're like on that. Knock people off the edge. That's what it was. It was like a circular arena, and it was just an overhead view, and the whole goal was just to knock people. There's that one. And then there's there, a shoot em one. There's a shooting one. Was it like a first or third third person shooter? Yeah. Because everyone had guns in the game. Yeah. yeah. Well, which was really weird. Because I, I heard it was... Well, there's guns and grenades. Yeah. I remember all. when we played the multiplayer in Turok 2. Melissa... Was a velociraptor. Was always the raptor. Oh, and you guys banned it. And we would ki we would kill you. Well, cause we no, no, you were like, you're not allowed to be the raptor anymore, Melissa. I'm sorry. Why did we ban you? I thought because we were Because it was too you. fast and too short. You guys had problems. But you couldn't shoot anything. No, no but, but I we couldn't shoot her. Room. We couldn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was like the odd job just without a gun. Yeah. yeah. That actually sounds really stupid. That sounds really terrible, actually. And you were Adon. I was always Adon because I think Adon had like low starting health, but she regenerated it. Yeah. That's. And I don't know who I was. I was whoever I wanted to be that. Uh, <laughs> I I was actually really surprised by the multiplayer in Turok 2. It was it was a lot of fun. It was actually really well done. Which obviously led to Rage Wars, Turok Rage Wars, but I don't remember us playing a whole I don't think we ever did. Which is really weird, because we played quite a bit of Turok too, but you would think that then we would play a lot of Rage Wars. We would transition, but we never did. I think we just kind of stuck with Turok, Turok 2. What was Rage Wars? Rage Wars was... It was just a multiplayer. It was multiplayer. It was basically that like that, but bigger. Bigger. Yeah, more characters, more guns. Remember more Turok 3. Remember Turok Did we ever... I don't think we played the multiplayer mm -hmm. in that one. No, because yeah, I one. bought it and I, I played the storyline. I didn't like it. it yeah. Now, Mario Kart 64 was the first game I bought for Nintendo 64. That was your game also, and nobody could ever win against you. No, I was <laughs> I was beast mode at this game. Yes, like, you were. I we was, had the little left, right, left, right, zoom. What are those the, called? The, the boosts? Yeah the, yeah, the drift boost. Yeah. yeah, oh my god. No, I had this game down to a science. And I think out of ten races, I could probably beat anyone like eight or nine times out of ten. Yep. I, I was, was particularly good at Rainbow Road, that's, surprisingly. Is that the one you can fly Rainbow off Road's on? easy when you can just jump off the edge and you end up you end up like clearing like half the track. Yeah. I don't know you could do that. Yep. Yep. I love Mario Kart 64. Like, I mean, at this point now, I mean, I, I like other Mario Karts better. But uh, mainly because a lot of these tracks are actually like just like Rainbow Road are actually kind of big. Yeah. And empty. They were like Nintendo was like, look how big we can make our tracks on the Nintendo 64. I don't know if there's a whole lot we can say about GoldenEye that hasn't been said like in magazines or on the internet or anything like. Or that we said for Perfect Dark. That we said for it's like GoldenEye but better. This is like Perfect Dark but worse. Is that? Is that <laughs> ever had for the well, it came out before. Perfect well, right, Dark. right. Yeah, you can't fault it for that. I mean, wasn't it made by the same company? Yeah, it was or? rare. Yeah, it was rare. Yeah. And I mean, this this was a fantastic game. Like, there's nothing you can really say against GoldenEye. No, it was... especially for its time. The faces even were even a little story weird. mode was good. Well, the faces were a little weird. Yeah, just like pasted on there. Yeah, no, the story was good. The multiplayer is good. I mean, I just prefer Perfect Dark because it's just this was a little too simple by the time Perfect Dark yeah. it came out. You didn't have a lot of control over your options. Like you walked really slow unless you activated a cheat. No, I I, I really enjoyed Goldeneye. I played it. You know, we played it a lot. This was actually um, uh, they for some reason mom and dad let us pick out games and they bought us for no good reason. I mean, out of all our our, our Nintendo 64 library, mom and dad did not buy a lot of these games. No, we did, which is really something cool. But uh, at one point, mm. just randomly... You guys got that game, and I got Yoshi's Story. You got Yoshi's Story. Another example of you being mom, too. You got to pick your own game, and me and Jordan... I mean, on the plus side, Jordan and I both wanted Goldeneye. Yeah. yeah. So, But we had to combine our game. But that's, but that's how mom often looked at it. So it was you, and then we were like one person. Well All right. We've talked about Perk Dark, and we've talked about Goldeneye. But I think that we probably played Duke Nukem 64, like, maybe as much as we played Goldeneye. 
Oh, I think we played it more. You think we played it more? Because there was just so much more to it. There was the jetpacks, there was... Yeah, there was a lot of uh, verticality to it. Yeah, yeah your uh, ship was the favorite level. And the ship was the best level. And I then know, there was I just like so many better, hidden though. stuff. Yeah. Like, just Explo like hidden rooms you could get into. I'm talking more along the lines of the first player. Well, even in the multiplayer, there's a lot of secret areas. Yeah. A lot of, like, weapons that you had to know the maps and co -op. to find. There was co-op. That wasn't in 007. I don't think 007 offered a co-op mode, no. did it? And then, then the, what's great about this is you didn't have to end the match and change the level. You could just go up, punch that little red, or that big red button, and you yep. beat the level, and it goes to the next one. Right. I, um, one of my favorite, one of my favorite aspects of this game is that, because it's split screen, it's on Nintendo 64, it's firing a homing rocket at Melissa. And then just watching the rocket do this to her screen, <laughs> and you're ooh when he dies, and then she, of course she's like no, nah! <laughs> the rocket just flies. Mash 64. That was my favorite game. That was a good game. A good. This, you, you, there are parts of this like you guys remember the graphics in this game. Why don't you look at this bag of this box? It was crappy. Look at these. Look at those character models. They look hot. That's, look at these. Look at these uniforms. I'm a badass biker with this orange, green, and I yellow jacket. I got my jacket. Portuguese pride <laughs> on. I don't even. This looks like the guy from Jamaican. Cool Runnings. And then you spoke people in the wheels. <laughs> that was the best part of the game. Like that's 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 you know the, I mean the game's a lot of fun, but I mean the, the sole reason to play it is to get like a nightstick or a baseball bat, jam it into someone's spokes and watch them go flying off the back. And you remember like there there were times we figured out how to break the physics in the game, and we would send someone like miles away from the road. Yeah. And for some reason the game like, rendered the entire countryside, like, miles away. Like, you just, they go launching through the sky, like, inhumanly, and then they don't have their bike. That person's screwed. They're not getting back in the race. Now, I don't know how you guys view the Nintendo 4, but I kind of view it as, like, this, this, this thing that kind of, like, Super Smash Bros. kept us together. Yeah. Yeah. And, because, uh, I mean, our lives were kind of crap. crap at that time. Kind of? Like, oh, okay, they were really, it was really crappy at that time. I thought it was great. We didn't have parents. We had you. And, then, and me and the Simpsons, I think. Yeah. Is really what kept. But, I mean, you know, for a lot of people, like, the Nintendo Store is, you know, just a system. And for other people, like, it's not even a system that they like. Like, they prefer the PlayStation because no, they had... Well, I know you do. But some people, like, prefer the PlayStation because they had, you know... RPGs. More, more, yeah, RPGs, like, more grown-up games, like Siphon Filter and, and stuff like that. And that's, I mean, I completely respect that. But, I mean, for us, like, the Nintendo Store was, like, a, the right system at the right... Well, I, th I think the Nintendo 64, with all Nintendo products, are more kid-friendly than PlayStation and Xbox. Well, at that time, the PlayStation 1 had a, had a little, like, they had it, Spyro, Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, so a little, they had yeah. a little bit there. But, I mean, I just think that the N64 with its four controller ports was just... Great. Was, was great, right. It wasn't just that it was kid-friendly, it was family-friendly in general, in the, in the sense that, like, several, more than just two people could play it. So you, you guys don't think it's, like, overly sentimental that... You know, this was like, I mean, it really was a system that kind of brought us This was together. our childhood, too. Yeah, because we didn't, we played Super Nintendo, we didn't play it that much. No. And then when 64 came out, I think there, I well, think... Because it, we were all, like, we old, were most, mostly, like, seven. Like, we were all at ages where, like... We could yeah, understand. We, made, we could understand and play together. Like, most may not have been very good because she was a little young, but at least she could play. Oh, if we beat her, it wasn't, the game wasn't called Beat Up People, it was called Mostly Needs to Live. <laughs> no, you would just get us in trouble still. Yeah, you, you would just cry and get us in trouble. Yeah, but at least I would get concussions. No, no, I will agree with you there. But we would get grounded because you died. We just get used to go crazy and like, whack, you get a hit, you get a hit. <laughs> no one's going to even know what you're talking about. So there are some of our memories of growing up with Nintendo 64. It, uh, it's a system that brought us together, divided us quite a bit, and I think you know, kept us kept us sane in a very, uh, what's the kindest word? Turbulent upbringing, I guess, is the, is the kindest that way. That kindest to, way to put it. Yeah, yeah. right. So, um, I want to thank my brother Jordan and my sister Melissa uh, for being in this video. And I want to thank everyone for watching. And until next time, you guys take it easy.